So I'm hoping that everybody's going to come back and watch because we have some rubber stamping tricks today that I want to show you uh, with solid stamps. So I have done this before, but I'm going to show a couple more things and then we're going to create a fun a slimline card because that's what the VIPs asked for. So thank you everybody for coming back. I'm seeing a few folks now. Um, can please share this with uh, your friends and your family. Uh, anybody who would love to craft, I would love for them to know a little bit about what I do and maybe they might like to come and join us too. So uh, hello everybody. Hello Anne from Florida and I see Mary and Karen and I see Peggy there I think as well. So a couple things I need to tell you. So first and foremost tomorrow is go live day for our brand new catalog. So you've probably seen it around. I'm going to point it out here. It's probably going to be crooked but uh, or not crooked backwards but this is our new catalog. Now how many of you who are customers of mine meaning that you've either um, um, you bought product from me in the last six months or you've taken a course with me um, <clears throat> and you're not a demonstrator have received your catalog because I sure hope so I sent them out I think in good time for you to have them so that you can flip through this and you can see what a great catalog it is because I really do think it is one of the best in a long time and for those of you who are on here right now and even if you're watching on the replay please feel free to comment and play along it's uh, it just makes it that much more fun rather than just sitting and watching a video so comment and let me know if you also agree that it is a pretty darn good catalog and it's our mini catalog goes from September 6th until what is the last date January 3rd is when the last day is and I get to show you that tomorrow and so I'm going to point you down right now and I'm going to tell you where you can come watch my catalog uh, live walkthrough tomorrow and I see that Karen you think so as well so I'm going to point you down I don't want you to get all nervous or all discombobulated I've, I've done a lot of that already today by coming on crooked uh, so let me just turn you around and then we will point you down at my work area and let's get going Tomorrow morning I'm going to do a walkthrough, not a super long one, but I want you to come and uh, see some of the things that I've noticed about the catalog and maybe there's some things that you haven't noticed because I know we tend to flip through it and we do it in the same order all the time and we sometimes miss things. I know I missed things until just a little while ago. So I uh, would love to show you a little bit more about the catalog, a few little samples that I've been creating up and then I also have uh, a prize for um, participation for those who come along. So it's tomorrow morning 9 a.m tomorrow September 6th and it's in our VIP group. So how do you get into the VIP group? Uh, hold on just a sec because I printed it out and it's over there. Hold on. Let's see if I can reach with my microphone. I'll come back to you. This is how you get, if you're not currently a member of the VI Peeps, that's how you can get in there. So if you go to www, if you put this on your uh, iPad or tablet, on your phone, dot designwithjoe.ca forward slash Joe's, J O S, and there's a little dash there, VI Peeps. Okay, so if you go there, that'll take you to our Facebook VI Peeps group, which is our community of crafters. We're over, uh, th I think we're up to 1100 now, and maybe even more than that. And it's just a great group of people who are crafters, paper crafters mainly, um, but people who just want to have some fun who want to partake into some prizes and giveaways. Last week we had our winning weekend, this weekend rather. And uh, so Wendy J is going to get some of the great DSP that I'm going to use in today's card uh, just for crafting up a card and playing in her own craft space. So that's where you can find me tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. And we are going to do a little walkthrough of this pretty darn great catalog. So the other thing that I want you to notice is if you have not signed up for holidays yet, we're doing a virtual party. And by we, I mean there's six of us. There's two from Canada, two from Australia, sorry, one from Australia, two from New Zealand, and one from the US. And we are doing a virtual open house. 
And our virtual open house is called Holidays. And it for us here in North America, and for me in particular, I'll go live September 8th, and you can watch the whole thing 4 to 7. Uh, I will be the last person up, so I will be uh, probably 6.30 to 7 or a little bit after that for my project. You can ro register at this link right here. So if you just type that in, and I'll leave that up for just a moment, and I'll also put it on this, I think I can put this on um, this video as well. And so you want to get in on that. Now, how you are, are become a member is if you are a customer of mine, and that means, again, if you have placed an order in the last year this time for Stampin' Up! product with me, so I'm your Canadian demonstrator, or if you've taken an online course with me, and if you're not a demonstrator. So if you're not currently a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so as a team we decided that we wanted this to be uh, an event that focused on our customers. And so that's what we uh, would like to invite to the group. And if you are not there yet, then I invite you to head on over there, to head here rather. You're gonna fill out a little form for me and then I will give you the link to get onto the Facebook group. Okay, so I'm hoping that, uh, oh, someone, Barb is saying she's gonna have to stick to a budget. Yes, you're gonna have, it will be hard, but it is going to have to. Uh, Barb, uh, no, we on some, Barb is asking uh, if we as demonstrators get to order the online exclusives. Yes and no. So yes, we usually have a selection that we can choose from, but not all of them. And we don't see all of them either. And so online exclusives, you might be um, mentioning, and I don't have a printout for it, but there are some special release designer series papers that are coming up available tomorrow, also on September 6th. We as demonstrators were not um, permitted to purchase any of these ones in advance. So we just heard about it a little bit ago. And so it was in my email this morning and you saw just a sneak peek at some of them. And in tomorrow's email, I'm gonna show you a little closer look at some of those, but just a picture from the online because I don't have any yet, but they are while supplies last. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Barb. And hello, Donna. Hello, Chris. We have some folks from all over today. So again, if you are a current customer of mine, then please register for designwithjoe.ca slash holidays. And if you um, are wanting to place an order between now and Friday, and you have not yet, you can still do that and get in on holidays. Okay, so we've got lots going on. It's a super exciting week. So what are we gonna be doing today? Well, today we're going to be playing with one of the new stamp sets, and this is Pick of the Patch. And Pick of the Patch is out of the Holiday Mini, so I wanna show you some things to do with that, but more just things uh, that you can do with some solid stamps. So these are solid stamps, and I know that some people sort of shy away from them. And uh, I'm, I, find that really sad because they're, you know, I don't know if they're my top favorite, but they're right up there with, uh, with open line images as well. And I want to show you just a couple things you can do with them today. Not everything, but a couple things. And uh, we've showed it before, but sometimes it just takes a few times before you really get the hang of something, right? So here we go. We are going to be playing with this. Now this also comes as a bundle. Now, one of the things when you are deciding what you want to get out of the holiday catalog is you want to think about getting bundles first. So if you have a whole list of items and you've got bundles and you've got paper and you've got embellishments and you have stamp sets individually and you want to narrow it down so that you don't blow the budget all at one time, anything that has a punch, I would say if it's a bundle that has a punch, you would want to order those first. I think Stampin' Up! only brings in a certain value of these and they don't, I think sometimes they don't necessarily get that we love punches. I love punches. And so they seem to go really quickly. So if there's something that you love, that's my recommendation is that you order those first and get those um, off your wish list and into your craft space. 
We're not going to be using the punch today. I have a project coming up in a future live where we will use the punch and you can see the versatility of that. What we're going to do is use the pick of the patch stamps and I want to show you some fun things, but I'm going to bring in some grid paper. So let me bring in my grid paper here. And what you need to do is we need to have you guys pick what stamp sets we want to work with. Okay, not stamp sets, which stamps we want to work with. So for this card that I'm going to be doing, it's going to be a slim line card because that's what the VIP picked uh, last week. I gave them a choice of just a regular card like we always make, a square card or slim line. Slim line was the choice. So we need up to three of our gourds or pumpkins in here. We can have three the same or we can have three different ones. So I would like you and I'm going to count them off here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to ask you guys to tell me which of these, first of all, do we want one repeated or do we want three different ones? And then if we do want, th which one do we want? And if we want three, which ones do we want? So I, which ones we should be using? And that's what I'm going to pull out. I'm going to pull in some of my blocks. I'm probably going to need to use um, my blocks in a couple different places. So I see, so we're going to go with the first person. So Susan selected three. So we're going to go with three. Now, which one? Three, six, two, one. Three, one, two, three, six, two, one. Uh, one, three, six, one, three, six, 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 four, five, six, number three repeated. Oh, Karen, you're the only one that's doing a repeat. So I think we have one, three, and six showing up a lot. So maybe we should do this one, this one, and this one. Okay. And this big one here. So when you open it up, these are photopolymer stamps. And what I do with my photopolymer stamps is I take them off the piece of paper, the thick piece of clear paper and I don't know if you can see it it's tucked in behind here and I leave it there and I just have that lighter one and then I put my stamps right on top of where they are so we're going to go with that one and I think three six oh three six one so we're also going to go for let's put here and then number one so a little tiny baby guy okay so we're going to go for that and I want you to be saying, I'm going to leave it here because I want you also to be, but don't put it in here yet. Think about what we want for our words. Then we have two, four, six, three, two, one, two, three, six. Looks like two was popular too. Three, six, two, one. Uh, two was popular too. Well, I think we've got these guys. We might, I might pull out number two a little bit later, but let's leave that. Okay, what we also, what I've also pulled in is I've pulled in one of the leaves, this one right here. I've pulled in these little, uh, what are we going to call them? What do you call those? Uh, I'm calling them sort of garlandy things, but they're vines, I guess. And then I also have this one, which is the top of the pumpkin. Okay, so just a piece of, and I'm using thick here. You don't have to use thick. You can use regular if you like. And I'm also going to pull in my simple chamois. So for the techniques we're going to be working with, you do want to have your simple chamois handy and really close because you're going to need to clean as we go. Okay. Now I'm going to do two different things to show you. First one is we're going to use sponge daubers. Okay, we're going to use sponge daubers. And if you don't have any of these in your stash, then you need some. They are perfect. If you, if you don't currently have the blending brushes, this is a really good substitute. They come, they have a really nice little foam on top. They're plastic and they have room for your finger to fit in. So you can get one going on, you know, all four fingers, maybe your thumb if you're really good at it, and you can just go to town like that. Now I already do have some that out that I use and I save mine by color. So I have pumpkin pie, I have old olive here, and I also have crushed curry. Now this used to be blushing bride. You can see it here, blushing bride. And we no longer have blushing bride. So I took an older one that was a lighter color and I've repurposed it to be uh, copper clay. Okay, so here's those stamps as well. So copper clay, pumpkin pie, 
and old olive. So I'm going to take this aside. We're going to come back to that so you can pick what words we want here. I'm just going to keep checking. And if you have any questions, just be sure to ask me. Hmm. I don't have enough room today. I've got to realign myself here. I'm going to keep the green, the old olive, and the pumpkin pie, and also the copper clay. Now, you sort of have to remember where you've put them so that you don't stick a stamp into the wrong one, right? We all do that. So I'm going to start with the biggest one and I just want to show you what we're going to do. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I'm going to go into my pumpkin pie first. First one we're going to do is we are just going to stamp. Okay, now I, I have enough pad underneath here that I've got some give. Because these are photopolymer, you do want to have your um, um, stamp and pierce mat, or you do want to have your silicone craft sheet, or you do want to have maybe a magazine or your catalog underneath you so that you get a nice impression. If you don't, with the photopolymer, you could possibly have where you're going to miss part of it. Okay, so there's, there's how we often stamp right? It looks great. We have lots of pumpkin pie on there, but we could also add a little bit because how many of you have a pumpkin, maybe at Halloween, but it is completely orange and there's not another speck of color on there? Probably not everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink it up again and this time I'm going to take my green and I'm going to pat it around okay just going to pat it around and you can do this yourself because it's easy to do if you don't have your sponge daubers okay so pat it around maybe don't give it the whole thing now what you could do is stamp this right away or you could stamp it off I'm going to stamp it off so I'm going to stamp it onto my scrap paper okay and I'm going to stamp it here okay so now I've got a, I don't know how I got that, but I've got a little bit of green there. So I'm going to clean off, squeak, 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 clean it off. Now what you notice here is that, hmm, okay, that's all right, but, let me hold it up for you, that's all right, but yeah, I don't know that that looks really natural. So let's try it again. We'll try number two, okay? Number two is, I'm inking it up again. Now I'm going to pull in some markers. Now the marker, the size that, the side that you want to use is the side that's the brush tip. And to find out which one is the brush tip, you do want to, now I've got two different kinds here. This is an old one and these are our two new ones. And you can see that they're a little bit different. They're the same length pretty much, but there's more of a black barrel on our new ones. They have a little smaller cap but they do say the same thing. So if you see that thick line, that means it's a brush tip. If you see the thin line, it means it's a bullet tip. So we're going to go in and let's use the green again. And we are going to, now, what also happens with your photopolymer is when it's been sitting there for a while, you will get your color. I'm hoping that you can see that on this side in particular. It beads up. I'll put it here. Maybe that's easier. It beads up on that side. So I am going to need to ink that up just a little bit again. Okay, so I'm going to ink that up. Oops, send stuff flying. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually tap right on top of it. Just tapping with the... Uh, brush tip and you can tap in you can go some some fuller pieces rather some what do I mean by that go in further with the marker now what you do want to do is you want to make sure that your lighter color is on your stamp so I wouldn't go in with an orange marker on top of a green pumpkin so now I've got a little bit of green. I'm just going to huff on that just to reconstitute it. Don't spit, just huff. And I'm going to stamp it again. Okay, so a little better. I've got a little more precision here. Let's try one more. So this is a variety of different ways that you can create some different looks with your stamps. I have to get one more thing. Hold on right here squeak again 
Um, it's my stamp and spritzer. Okay, so I've got my stamp and spritzer here. Same thing, ink, marker. Okay, I'm gonna do it much quicker this time just to get it in there to show you the technique. And now I'm gonna give it a little spritz. Okay, a little tiny spritz. So that's going to make it a, whoops, one more, a little bit more watery. I sprayed myself that time. So you're gonna get a different look this time. Okay, so that you can see the different look. It's a little bit more, uh, almost like a pebbly surface. So here's where you, here's where we've gone. Just stamp pad, stamp pad with another stamp pad tapped onto it, stamp pad with a marker on the side, and a stamp pad with the marker with water. Now let's do one last one. And you can tell me which one you like the best. Which one do you like so far? And have you ever tried any of these? Um, maybe you have. Okay, ink it one more time. Now I'm going to pull in the old olive. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to tap it lightly over top. Again, I wouldn't do an orange on top of a green because it does pick up some of that ink. And let's stamp this one. Okay, so there we have the, the progression as we go. Now, I personally like these two the best these three really the best and and really this one but it just to me gives a pretty realistic kind of look so which one do you think is the one and likes the one that was sprayed with water um before i did this one i think so out of all those four which one do you like the best and then we're going to turn it over and we are or turn my paper over and we are going to start with uh, the other ones so that you can, uh, we can decide what we're going to play with. The last two, Deborah says, so these last two, because, and I think why, if I, um, Karen says the last one, it, for me, it's because it's more natural and it's more softer and subtle. That's why I like it the best. But there may be times when you want this particular look, right? So you might want, um, well, let me think, when would you want this? If you're doing a really bold piece, and let's say you've got a circle or something and you want to uh, section off part of the circle, easy to do. If you want a circle that's half red and half green, you can do that. So we're going to now, we could probably use this one. In fact, actually, we're going to use this one. No, we're not. Let's keep going. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try couple different things here. Okay, so now I've got my pumpkin pie. I'm going to put on a little bit of copper clay. Now one thing when you are sponging is you want to go straight down on top. Okay, so I've got a little bit of my copper clay and I'm going to put a little bit of green on here as well. Okay, not too too much. And we're going to stamp that down. Now we're going to do a few different things. So here, I want to have, we're gonna use our marker again. We're also gonna use the brush tip. This is the uh, top of the pumpkin. If I do the whole thing, which I'll do here, if I do the whole thing, to me that's pretty tall. That's almost more what you get for a, um, a Halloween pumpkin. Right, I, it just seems to suit it. If we're going more for fall pumpkins, I think what I want is I want a smaller one. So this is how you can get more life out of your stamps. Use your marker, go right over top, and get a smaller top. Now, we're gonna take, I've taken, because I don't have another two small ones, We I've put these ones onto a block, let me see, so you can see that better, onto a block, so that I can see both of them. Now I have to have a little bit more control this time as I'm using it, but I'm going to just ink this small one up and I'm gonna put that on top. Okay, and I've got a little bit of my garland. So here I'm cleaning all the time as I go. And now I want this one to be darker as well. And this is the littler leaf. I like the little leaf and it's going to go down here. 
Okay, so we've created a little bit more of a picture. Now though you wanted a second one. So I'm gonna do the second one not orange. Okay, I'm gonna do it brown, which is my copper clay. I'm gonna come in with my old olive as well. A little bit more old olive on this one than on my first one. Tap it on. Go all the way around if you want. Let's go all the way around. And we're going to stamp that one. This one's going to look completely different for color. Look how dark that is in comparison. And then our little guy, what color do we want our last little guy to be? You can let me know that, which one you would like. Uh, what color? Oh, here I'm looking for this. I'm looking for the larger one now. So the larger one I'm going to put down here. Clean as you go. And I think I am also going to put the top one on. And I'm going to do it a little bit different than I did last time. So I love solid stamps because you can just play. This is exactly what this is, is playing. And now I'm going to put more green, but I'm going to stamp off this time and I'm going, we might not see him all that much, but that's okay. Okay. And we've got a leaf up there. Uh, the white pumpkin blue, blue. Uh oh, um, I wonder if you could put ink in the white creases. You could, um, actually Deborah, if you wanted to with a marker, um, to fill it in, you're thinking, right? You certainly could. Or what you could also do perhaps is use a smaller one over top, but I think you might notice that. Um, I sort of like the creases, but I, I get what you're, what you're saying. So our third one, um, the white pumpkin, the white pumpkin, the white pumpkin, the white one. I think I asked the question what color we wanted to go, right? And we said white. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm not sure we want to do white on top of here. Um, Lorna, I'm just not 100% sure that that's going to give a, a look that looks the same. So here's our baby one. So this is pecan pie. I'm going to stamp off so that get, we get a lighter brown. And then I'm going to use my, if I can find it, my pumpkin pie on this one. So we're going to use pumpkin pie on top of the pecan pie. So we're going to have a type of pie. So this one's going to be much lighter. Okay, so he's a little bit browner, got a little bit of orange, and I think we need to do the top here. We're going to do again just the little top with our marker. You always want to use it on its side. Okay, and there's the top there. And how about that leaf? She, or is that leaf going to overpower him a bit? I th yeah, see that leaf I think is a little bit too big. Yeah, for that little guy. He might just need to, to be by himself. We'll give him a little bit here. Okay, we'll give him that. Okay, so that's what we want to work with. Now what we're going to do is work, go on to the rest of our card. So I'm going to put everything, close everything up and we'll decide later on what the ink color is going to be for our words. And you guys are thinking about which words you want, right? So little trick, if you have a problem getting these ones to close, these are the new version and it's not even new anymore. They've been around for quite a while, but they sometimes are a little tight. And I, I find that if I put my finger here, I get my finger in the ink. So I push from this end with my my index finger until it comes out and then it's a little bit easier for me just to pull it. Okay, so let's go on to the rest of the card. Let's put these guys aside for just a little bit. So I'm going to pull in some things here. I've got my one and three quarter inch circle punch and I'm really ho hoping that I left enough room here to cut them out. So we're going to go for one pumpkin here. We're going to go for pumpkin number two here. And we're going to go for a little baby pumpkin here. Oops. Okay, now we could also go for some of these guys, but we didn't finish them off. So maybe what I'll do is I will take a picture of that and put it onto the, uh, the blog post. Okay, I want to close this up just so that it's not going to be in my way. Now, 
let's talk about the rest of the card. So we've got our gourds, our three gourds. I wanted to, the uh, deckled circles are new dies. Now, to me, these are must-have dies. So must-have dies, usually for me, are nested, have a lot of versatility. These ones are definitely nested. You actually get, let me double check, you get 14 different sizes of circles, and they range in size from one and an eighth to five and three quarters. So a really, really huge range. And we're going to use this one, which is the fourth largest, which is one, two, three, two and an eighth. And I've already cut them out and in old olive. Those back. So we're just going to glue those down right on top with my stamp and seal. Turn them over to do that. So I'm just putting on a little bit of seal. Here I could use liquid glue, doesn't matter. If you have liquid glue, go ahead and use that. And it's going to go right in the middle. And I'll just show you, well, you can probably see it pretty well what the deckled edges look like. And what's nice about the deckled edges on the, on the circles and the rectangles is if I went for a smaller one, if I had cut that one out smaller, the deckles are different. So they're not the same. It's not just a repeat. You're not going to have them look exactly the same one from the other. Okay. Now we need to pick some paper. So this is the All About Autumn paper. And this is some of the paper that I um, am giving Wendy, who was in our, uh, was our winner this time. And there's great colors in here. So Cajun Craze, Copper Clay, Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, Moody Moe, which is surprising, Mossy Meadow, Pretty Peacock, Pumpkin Pie, and Very Vanilla. Lots and lots of great colors. So on one side are photos. <clears throat> and I'm just going to show you the photos. These are all six by six paper. So I'm just going to quickly run through all of these. Just beautiful fall scenes, these guys. Uh, some uh, paneling, wood paneling. This one I love, like an overhead shot. This one is, uh, so it's textures like velvet. There's our gourds right there. Maybe that's what you were talking about, the uh, the white. Then we have some books, which I thought, remember Reader's Digest? Weren't they all sort of that color? Leaves, sort of that pinky tone, pinky orangey tones, leather, more leaves, but different leaves, and then more books. Then we get to the other side, and the other side, are they are all different foils in different colors. They're just beautiful. And so far, I think I have used mostly this side, but, and I feel bad about cutting it up and not using that side, but there's this, every one of them is beautiful. I don't, I have to say there isn't one that I don't like. So what I've cut out already is I cut one of the copper clay and it was this one on the back. So here's where you can, you don't even have to use the full sheet. Here you could use just a piece of it on a card and it would look stunning. So we've got that. And then I pulled in, these we no longer have, but just look at this, the rose gold specialty paper. There are three different types of paper. There's a matte copper, a shiny copper, and a holographic kind of iridescent copper. And for our project right now, I've selected the shiny one. So I've got that here. Now all the measurements are going to be on my blog and it should be up tomorrow or the next day at the latest. I always like to do the video as well, but you can get all the measurements for making this card. So we're doing a slimline card and I'm just going to fold that in half. We are going to glue this on top of here. Now, if you wanted, you could take, say, some circles out of here, if you wanted. If you could take it out of the foil paper before you glue on. And I have done that lots of times. I am not going to do that today, just, just for quickness, I guess, just for ease. Uh, it's just so I can glue this down fairly quickly. But it's a great way to save some money as you are um, crafting. And I love the copper, and the copper in here is going to pick up beautifully on that copper. Now, this rose gold paper has been around for a little while, but to me, it is copper. Get that a little bit 
straighter, I think. There we go. I'm going to put this directly on here. You're going to have another decision. You've got a couple decisions that you need to be making coming up here pretty soon. Uh, the first one we're going to do is orientation for the card. Because right now it's just sort of generic. Oops, that's not really straight. That's a little better. Okay, so they are really just beautiful, beautiful colors. So do we want our card to go this way? Or do we want our card to go this way? You can let me know in the comments and I'm going to take whatever I see the most of in the comments there, which way we want our card to go. Okay, and then we're going to do some playing around with that while I'm waiting for that. We have landscape. Landscape, which is this way. Landscape from Barb, landscape from Debbie, from Mary. We've got three landscapes. I think that looks like it might be the way to go. Judy too. Okay, so we're going landscape. So we're gonna go like this. So we need a um, greeting. What would we like it to be? So we're, this is an autumn card, a fall card. Maybe not so much a Halloween card. So happy Halloween might not be what we want to say. Um, so a harvest of blessings, you're the pick of the patch, thanks so much, or we could do cutie pie. So I'm going to take the third person, third person this time, and I see Judy's got pick of the patch, so third person, I'm changing it up on you. Um, so that's number one, and I'm going to open it up, and I'm just going to keep an eye there on the comments to see what you guys, pick of the patch from Barb as well, and a harvest from Mary. And so a harvest of blessings for Mary is what we're going with. Pick of the patch looks really popular though. Okay, so I need to put this on to a stamp. Because I don't have my long one out, I'm going to use it crossways on my bigger block, which is how you can use that. And I have a piece of um, very vanilla here. And what color should we, if these are our colors, Okay, so we have to decide how we're going to place all these guys here. But if those are our colors, what words do we want to have? Do we want, um, you know what? I might make an executive decision here. I think I might go for Old Olive. I, in fact, I think I am going to go for Old Olive. Sorry if everybody, we could have gone for two colors too. Could We could, couldn't we? A harvest of Blessings. I'm going to try and get that nice and straight. It is straight. Clean off. I'm going to put that away. And um, <laughs> scissors. So I know that some of you are saying, don't cut it with scissors. I am going to cut it with scissors. And try and make it with a piece that's only this big. I should have a pretty good chance of getting it straight, maybe. Um, and I'm also going to flag this. So when you flag, you go in right from the middle and then you go from each corner into the middle. Looks like I didn't quite get the middle there and it should just pop out of there pretty much no problem. Okay, so there's this guy. I think I want to do something different with this though. Hold on. I'm thinking, let me see what little pieces I might have. So I've got that one that's small enough. This one I don't think is in the right color choices. We could do this one behind it. So we could either do, this one's different, a different pattern than the background. We could either do vanilla or maybe I have, oh I only have a tiny piece of the green. I thought I had another piece of green. But I suppose I could cut a piece of green, couldn't I? What would you like in there? A Harvest of Blessings is going to go on top of one of those. Let me know which one you like the best. And while you're doing that, I'm going to put these ones away. And then I'm going to go grab my trimmer, which is right here. You see? Hello, Char. Thanks for coming and watching. Um, we have a green from Anne. Green might be the best. The only thing is that this is Mellow Moss. I don't know why I've called it that since it came out. Mossy Meadow. 
Um, Mellow Moss is old. It's an old color. Strip on the left. I'm not too sure which that means because I've moved it now, Barb. Sorry. Um, are we okay with having a different green on there, you guys? Because I'm seeing two greens come out. So if that's okay, give me some a thumbs up or some hearts if that's okay with you, that it's going to be a different green than the old olive. And I will wait for just one moment. Thank you for sharing, Char. If anyone else would love to share, I would be very appreciative of that as well. Okay, so let's see. So the measurement on this one is three quarters. So I'm gonna go for, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing much for reaction to that one if you wanted to go for this green or not. So I don't wanna cut into it if you think maybe we shouldn't do it. Tell you what, let me cut one here. Let me cut an inch piece here. Let's see what it looks like. And you guys can let me know if it, yeah, Joanne, it really needed to be something different. And why I sort of like that too is because the green will show up nicely on here. Put that off to the side. Okay, let's pretend that's the way it's gonna go and our Harvest of Blessings is gonna go here. Thank you, Barb and Barb. I'm putting liquid glue on this guy. And we're gonna have a, just an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then I am also going to give it a flag. Now I do wanna let this set up just a little bit more because with a foil piece of paper, it's a little bit more slippery than if it were just cardstock. So I do wanna just make sure that that's going to be a little bit um, more solid on there before I do any cutting. And I think I'm probably okay. Scissors. And I'm just following the line that I created. May not be perfect, but that's okay. These are handmade cards. They don't need to be perfect. Okay, now what we're gonna do, which one do you want? Now, you, know, you know why I don't like this one? Because it's small, medium, large. I would rather, we might want to have even our small one in the middle. It's going to be something like that. You know what? I think I like that best because this one is so much smaller than the other ones. So I'm going to glue this one down. There he is here. I love the colors on that one. Glue this one down as well. So I'm going to be looking at I'm gonna look at the amount of space I have here, and you can see top to bottom, it's sort of centered, not quite centered. And then I'm gonna try and match up that placement there. For this one here, I'm going to put dimensionals on the back. I'm using up the rest of my dimensionals here, which I hope everybody does, so you get a little bit more bang for your buck out of your dimensionals. I'm still amazed when I have folks who have never done that and they throw it out but I know that if you're ever at a stamping event with people they will tell you no don't do it here's what you need to do so that's going to go right in the middle the harvest of blessings might need to go I don't know do we want it on a crooked or crooked or do we want it straight we might want it straight here right straight but how about if we pull in the green and we make a little bow for it? So I'm going to make a double bow. So this is, I love this particular color. This is actually Parakeet Party and I love that it's glitzy, but it's a great green. It, um, it's not nearly as bright as what I think Parakeet Party is. I think I need to get a little bit more. Um, so it goes with a lot of different things. So I've used it a lot just by itself. So I've just doubled it up, making a double bow, pulling it out, playing with it just a little bit. And now I'm going to cut that off. So good news, 
hopefully getting my cabinets in my room next week hopefully they're building them this week and uh, I am so excited to be somewhere where I have a little bit better light hopefully you are too so we're gonna put that on top of there and that's gonna go on the underneath I think I just got another one we're gonna put that on this side here and I'm probably going to end up trimming that off okay and I'm going to put dimensionals on the bottom here because I'm not sure that did anybody let me know if it was going straight or crooked this is copper clay Barb you were saying that you didn't know what the color is this is copper clay and Barb is in my In Color Club. And this is the color we are at this week, this month, the last color. Okay, so let's take these off. So this is a very rich looking card. Now I have two other samples that I want you to see. There we go. I could probably just trim that off a tiny bit so it doesn't get stuck in the card. But I'm going to leave the other one long. Let's get these out of here. Now, the last thing that I do want to do is I have pulled out, and I'm really liking these too. These are the Neutrals Adhesive Backed Sequins. And I've been using the copper a lot, but do you want copper or do you want these sort of espresso ones? Let me know which one you'd like while I get my take your pick tool out. And we're just going to put a couple of these around. Bring that guy out of the way too. And then I'm going to show you some other samples. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes when we are designing so what Anne said is that she loves how it's coming together and sometimes we don't give ourselves enough of a chance to to really start to enjoy the process so the process here I have an idea in mind in fact this one is very 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 similar to what uh, what I have espresso we're gonna go with um, and I'm gonna put one here the big one and sometimes we just think that hey we don't know we give up too quickly, I think. We give up too quickly just because we're not too sure. Now, where do I want this last one to go? Over here. And you know what? It's, I think, too small. I think I want a bigger one again. We want a bigger guy, perhaps right here. Okay, so we just are going to go with three, I think, on that one. And I like it sort of on that side. And I don't know why I like it on that side. Maybe because there's lots of this color, which is very similar, already on the other side. Okay. So let me bring in, um, I'm going to bring in the first one I made, which was a square card. Okay, so that is very similar. But what we're doing here is we are using groupings. Okay, so groupings of four, same techniques on all of these guys. I did do the words separately. So again, we didn't repeat the same size. So here we only use the same one because these ones are the smaller one and the gourd. And so you can see sort of how it looks if you do something that's almost completely different. So there's that guy. Now let me bring in the one that I made in advance. Okay, so here it is here. So this guy here, I did use pick of the patch, which was everybody's favorite, except Mary got in there as number three, I think. And similar colors on this one here. I'm surprised at that. And um, more leaves on this one. And I did do the gourd as well. And I put a little uh, leaf here, which I probably could still, I'm not going to, not while it's down there. I could have done on there. So let me know which one is your favorite. This one too, not nearly as rich looking perhaps because it's on very vanilla. And this one here is on old olive and this one is on copper clay. So just put into the comments which one you think is probably your favorite. And um, 
be sure to check out the blog post. I'm hoping to have it up tomorrow, but there's a lot going on between today and tomorrow. Um, and I'll show this also during our uh, catalog walkthrough tomorrow. I'll show all of these again so that we can see them. So yeah, you know what? Mary says she likes all of them together. I agree. They all look pretty cool together. And this set is great because you can get Halloween out of it and you can also get fall and autumn out of it. So everybody have a great afternoon and evening and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.